Hi, my name is uh, George Dagnino, and I'm the editor of the Peter Dag portfolio uh, since 1977. I've seen a lot of business cycles, a lot of markets of various types, high inflation, low inflation, uh, bear markets, bull markets, you name it. I, in the meantime, I also manage $4 billion of interest rates and uh, foreign currencies, derivatives, uh, for a large institution and so I, I have a feeling of how the economy or the business cycle impacts asset prices. Uh, by the way, Peter Dagg is me and uh, is my pen name. A long time ago I decided instead of being called George Tagnino, I <laughs> switched to Peter Dagg. I don't know if I, that made any sense but anyway this is the first of a series of presentations, short presentations, uh, talking about how the biz what is the business cycle, why we care about the business cycle, why people who work and analyze business activities make a lot of money, uh, and why it helps to invest in these very uncertain times. Hopefully you will enjoy it and you'll learn something as well. <laughs> okay. The question is, how long is the a business cycle? Well, uh, this table shows uh, all the reference dates from the National Bureau of Economic Research, NBER, and they are the record keepers of the uh, troughs and peaks of all the business cycles. What we are interested in is in the last one of the table, which, which shows the post-World War II cycles. There have been 11 cycles, and uh, the, the the bottom line there is 73 months or 66 months. It's about five to six years from peak to peak or troughs to troughs. So you have basically uh, three to four years on the upside and one to two years on the downside. Uh, this is the basic reference and this is useful to have an understanding so that when the, res the expansion starts then we know that uh, roughly the expansion lasts anywhere between two to three years slightly longer than that on average. The main reason we care about the business cycle is because it helps investors in managing risk. You know, when you invest money, you don't just buy something to make money. Yes, you do. But on the other hand, you also make sure that you don't lose money. In other words, you want returns, but with low volatility. So this is called managing risk. What is the main issue in managing risk? The managing risk depends on the odds of being right. If you are always right, obviously you don't have any volatility in your portfolio because you always sell and always buy at the right time and the right things. But that's an ideal situation. You can look at it, at, at you know investing like a game of poker. By the way, I'm not a, a, a poker player, but you know if you have bad cards you don't bet a lot of money because you know you're not going to win or at least the odds of winning are very low. So what you do, you put a, a little amount of money on the table. If you have more money, I mean better cards, and, and you know you, the odds are in your favor, then you start increasing your bets because you know the odds favor you're winning the pot. The same thing is in investing. If you are right, and if you feel you co you're comfortable about the outlook of, of the markets or specific sectors and therefore stocks, then you put more money into them. But if the odds of making money is low, then obviously you should not put too much money in it. So where the, the business cycle is going to help you is to understand what are the major forces in the economy and these forces, which sectors and which stocks are likely to favor. Of course, the business cycle changes and therefore your investment strategy should adapt to these changes. So really managing risk, therefore, 
and this is why strategists are so important in any investment management company, is because it means that you're re reducing the odds of making or being wrong. In other words, if you uh, feel that the odds of being wrong increases, then obviously you invest less money. So recognizing the main trends, they are driven by fundamental forces. This is the main thing of what the, I think, a, a careful uh, view of the business cycle can give you is that by understanding and recognizing the main forces, which will last for a long, long time, some people call it momentum, but when you recognize the main trends, then you can play those main trends and make considerable, considerable amount of money with low volatility. What drives the business cycle? Make no mistake about it, believe me, the, the business cycle repeats itself since day one, I might say, because it's caused by business decisions. And business people are human. And I, I worked in, in, in business and I know that they make mistakes. I know that they become emotional. And this overshooting of the making decisions, which I will discuss in this and the, in future presentations, this business decisions is what cause business to grow faster or to, to slower. It's how business responds to trends in the business cycles. They call it the marketplace, but that's okay. But they make decision on the basis of what they see. So this is the main, main reason why business cycles fluctuates reflecting first a strong economy then a slow economy then a strong economy again and this is what the purpose of this uh, presentations is is to expose you to all these dynamics the second of course force is the government or agency for instance obviously the fed the Fed raising interest rates or the Fed lowering interest rates has a major, major impact uh, in, uh, in driving the main trend of the business cycles. The third item is the markets always win. Make no mistake about it. The, you can, they can do anything they want. They can plan anything they want. But if it doesn't make sense, it will fail. If it makes sense, it will succeed. Russia collapsed because the markets won. Uh, Europe uh, was in trouble, has been in trouble in 2010 and 2011 because corporate uh, countries wanted to borrow at, at the rate, at the low rate, the rate that Germany really wanted. And, and then they got in trouble because they were not producing the wealth to repay the debt, and then they, they're fi they've been failing. So the markets eventually catch up with, with bad decision by either government or business. What to look for? This is what, what we are going to talk about in, in this presentation. I'm going to give you some really basic basics of the main forces of the the. The business cycle uh, in, its, in its basic elements. Then, what uh, in the future presentations I will get more and more in detail. But this is just a, an overview of of the process. This is the is the business cycle. What the business cycle shows is the growth of the economy from above potential that is average growth which is per the United States is around 2.73 percent and then slows down and then the economy goes very slow below growth potential this is sometimes by the way uh, called also either growth recession or recession when the the, the the growth of the economy is goes very weak then there are forces that cause the economy as we will see later there to grow stronger then the the economy improves 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 and then we go here and grows again booming and the cycle starts all over again
what is the bottom line? The bottom line is that if you follow the decisions made by business and consumers, you will recognize the powerful forces driving the prices of all asset classes. In a series of videos that uh, you will find on www.peterdak.com, I will show you how and what kind of data you should follow. I have to stop here for timing reasons allowed by YouTube, but if you want to review the whole presentation where I discuss the, uh, the kind of indicators you should follow to keep track of the business cycle and implications for your investments, please go to www.peterdag.com where you will be able to see the whole video. Again, thank you very much for following this uh, presentation.